Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to talk about the divergence theorem. The equation describing the divergence theorem is that we integrate over an enclosed surface. We multiply vector field times the area element. The divergence theorem tells us that that's the same as taking the volume integral of the divergence of the vector field times a volume element. Now, sometimes this comes in really handy because if we cannot solve the problem using the left side of this equation, we can sometimes solve the problem using the right side of that equation. And here's an example. Let's say we have a point charge. We draw a Gaussian surface around it so that we want to know the electric field on the surface of the Gaussian surface. The electric field in the R direction will always be equal to K times Q, the size of the charge. Let me indicate it, that this is the size charge Q divided by the distance from the charge to the edge of the Gaussian surface. Let's go ahead and try to solve the problem using the right side of the equation. We're going to take the divergence of the vector field times dV. Now in rectangular coordinates we would use this equation but it makes more sense to do it in spherical coordinates and since the electric field is directly radially outward there's only one component in the electric field, the R component. The theta and phi components are not there, so they're simply zero. We do have to keep in mind that the volume element is going to be equal to R squared times the sine of theta times the R d theta d phi. Remember that in spherical coordinates, theta is the angle from the positive z direction down to the negative z direction over an angle of 180 degrees, and the phi angle is the 360 degrees all the way in the horizontal direction. It's a complete 360 degree angle. So let's go ahead and use this part of the equation. We're going to put E in there. We can now say that the volume integral of the divergence of the electric field times the volume element, we're going to solve for that and see what we get. This is going to be equal to the volume integral of the divergence of E. The divergence of E is equal to 1 over R squared times a partial derivative with respect to R of R squared times the component of the electric field in the R direction. The component in the R direction is right here, so let's go ahead and do that. That's equal to 1 over R squared times a partial derivative with respect to R of R squared times the component in the R direction, which is K q divided by r sub naught squared. Since the radius is constant, we can then say that the radius in that case is simply r sub naught squared. And we can then pull that outside integral sign. We still need a dv. The dv is equal to this. That's equal to r squared times the sine of theta times dr d theta d phi. To simplify things, let's see what we can take outside the integral sign. So first of all, Let's do this first. We need to take the partial derivative of this, multiply times dv. The partial derivative of this will be as follows. This is equal to the integral, the volume integral of 1 over r squared. The partial derivative is there's only one variable here. That would be 2 times r times kq over r sub naught squared, because that's just a constant. And then we multiply that times r squared times the sine of theta dr d theta, d phi. Okay, simplifying this a little bit more, notice we have an r squared down here and an r squared up here, that cancels out. We're left with an r, the 2kq over r sub naught squared can come outside the integral sign. So this is equal to 2kq over r sub naught squared times, and we're going to have a triple integral, of r times the sine of theta dr d theta d phi. And we can start out with integrating over d phi. So we're going to integrate that one first. This becomes equal to 2kq over r sub naught squared. We have a double integral remaining, r sine of theta dr d theta. And then if we integrate d phi, we get phi. And the limits of integration, remember, that was the angle that represents the horizontal plane, the xy plane, 360 degrees, so that will be from 0 to 2 pi. Plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get 2 pi. We can then multiply this by 2 pi. So this becomes now 4 pi times k 
Q over R sub naught squared times the double integral. We have R sine theta d theta. Whoop, this should be dr. That's better. So we're going to now integrate over the sine of theta d theta. So we're still left with R times dr. When we integrate the sine of theta, we get the negative cosine of theta. Negative cosine of theta. And we're going to integrate that from 0 to pi. It's going to be from the, the lower axis to the upper axis. So this, the limits are going to be from 0 to pi. When we plug in the upper limit, let's see what we get. This is equal to 4 pi kq over r sub naught squared times the integral of r times dr. When we plug in the upper limit, we have a minus cosine of pi. The cosine of pi is minus 1. Therefore, minus times the minus 1 is a plus 1. 1 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, the cosine of 0 is 1, but we have a minus here, so it would be minus times the minus 1. Of course, that will become a plus 1. So we have another factor of 2 there. That becomes then the following. This is equal to 8 pi kq over r sub naught squared and now we're ready to integrate r dr when we integrate that we get r squared over 2 and that will be from 0 to the edge of the surface gaussian surface r sub naught notice when we do that we have again when plugging the lower limit we get 0 plugging the upper limit we get r sub naught squared and this 2 cancels out this a that becomes a 4 this now becomes 4 pi kq over r sub naught squared times r sub naught squared. Now notice the r sub naught squared cancel out as well. And remember that k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. So this can be written as 4 pi times q divided by 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. Four pi's cancel out, and finally you can say that the divergence of the electric field times dv is simply equal to q over epsilon sub naught. And that should now look familiar to you if you'd seen this before, because if I now go back over here and write this in terms of the electric field, I can then say that the surface integral of the electric field multiply times the area, the surface area of the Gaussian surface, which is equal to the divergence, the volume integral of the divergence of the electric field dotted with dv. And then we just realized that this is equal to q over epsilon sub naught. That means that the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to the charge inside the Gaussian surface divided by epsilon sub naught, which by now we should recognize as Gauss's law. And that's indeed where Gauss's law came from by applying the divergence theorem to a Gaussian surface, a spherical Gaussian surface with a charge Q inside. We then recognize that this actually is a good way of showing that that's how we derive the Gauss's law. And a good example of the divergence theorem as well.